Hello, and welcome to this tutorial on setting up boundary conditions for an FEA simulation on SimScale. So what is a boundary condition? It is important to remember that structural analysis is the solving of equations which define a certain system. For FEA, this equation can be thought of as Hooke's law. Force is equal to stiffness times displacement. Boundary conditions are simply the input values for this equation. For example, when we're doing an analysis of a simply supported beam, you may place a force at the center and supports at either end. You need a force and a support to write out your equations and get an answer for your reaction forces. The same is true for FEA. To determine stresses at different points on the beam, you need some material properties, such as Young's modulus. The same is true for FEA. FEA boundary conditions then can be thought of as the known forces and supports in our equation. Boundary conditions on the SimScale platform can be found under the Boundary Conditions tab once a structural simulation has been selected. The first boundary condition we will investigate is the bolt preload. This boundary condition will allow you to specify a tensile load that results from the tightness of a bolt and nut in the system. Here we can see that the boundary condition requires a specified force and associated face. In the force value field, we can input the preload force that will be applied to each of the bolts. The face assigned must be cylindrical, continuous, and not assigned to contact conditions. The next boundary condition we have is the elastic support. This will allow us to constrain our system using a virtual spring connected to the global environment. We see that we must specify four things. First is the spring stiffness. Setting this to orthotropic will allow us to specify different stiffness values for X, Y, and Z directions, while the isotropic setting will keep the stiffness constant in all directions. Second is the stiffness definition, where we can define whether we are going to input a total stiffness value or a distributed stiffness value per unit area. Third, we simply specify what that stiffness value is. Lastly then, we assign the boundary condition to the faces within the system. Next up is the fixed support. This boundary condition completely locks all the nodes on a specified edge, face, volume, or single node. This is often a default support type for FEA simulations, but be careful. If all nodes on a support are locked, Poisson effects, stress concentration, and unexpected results can occur. Sometimes, for this reason, it is better to use our next boundary condition instead, which is the fixed value condition. This allows us to specify exactly what translational degrees of freedom the system has. We can untick these boxes to make the system completely unconstrained in a certain direction or input a value to specify the maximum displacement allowable in a direction. For example, in this snap fit case, where I've modeled half a standard snap fit lock, I have fixed the holding body vertically in the Z direction on this face by use of a symmetry plane, which we will talk about later. But I've constrained the body in only the lateral and longitudinal directions X and Y. If I had have used a fixed support for the entire body, the nodes which eventually come into contact with this prong as it snaps shut would be completely locked and unable to move. This inability to move means the nodes cannot undergo any strain, and as a result, no surface stress will develop for me to see. With the fixed value displacement, we can also dis specify by use of a table a time-dependent displacement value. In this example, where the prong body is moving into the holder body, I have given faces of the prong body a fixed value displacement that varies with time. This type of displacement can be input by use of a formula with our calculator, or a table where you can directly specify displacements or upload a CSV file with the relevant data. Our next boundary condition is the remote displacement. This condition is similar to the fixed value However, it uses a remote point, specified by XYZ coordinates to guide the system. With this, we can specify the translational degrees of freedom along with the rotational degrees of freedom 
all with respect to an external point. As before, values can be input manually or specified with a formula or table. We also have the option of whether to allow deformable behaviour on the assigned entities or consider these entities rigid. Rotating motion is the next boundary condition in our drop-down list. This allows for the definition of a rigid body rotation for the simulation. We must specify the base point, which is the centre of rotation, and the rotation axis, which is the unit vector that defines the axis around which the body will rotate. The right-hand rule applies in this case. I point my right-hand thumb in the direction of the rotation axis, in this case positive z, so downwards according to the coordinate system in the bottom right, and close my fist. The direction my fingers curl when I close my fist is the direction of rotation. In this case, from the current view, the rotation will be clockwise. The rotation angle should also be specified, most commonly as a time varying value by use of a table or formula as shown before. Symmetry planes are next. This boundary condition allows us to choose a plane along which there is mirror symmetry. This will constrain the chosen faces, chosen faces in the normal direction to this plane, but allow tangential move, movement. The centrifugal force boundary allows us to input rotation as done in the rotation motion boundary, but apply the resultant force of this rotation to the system. This boundary will not rotate the system, that is done by the rotation, rotating motion boundary condition, but it will apply the rotational force. The follower pressure boundary condition is only available in non-linear simulations and is similar to the pressure boundary condition. Both boundary conditions allow us to input a pressure value that will be applied to a face of the system. However, if the body undergoes a large deflection, the normal vector to the face now points in a different direction. The simple pressure boundary condition will not account for this. The pressure force will always point in the same direction as specified initially. To account for these deflections, we can use the follower pressure, which tracks the normal direction of the face throughout the simulation, and keeps the pressure force normal to the face as the system deforms. Next on this drop-down list is force. This is a simple boundary condition that applies a specified distributed force to the system. For example, if I apply 50 newtons of force in the downwards direction to this face, it will directly apply the 50 newtons. But if I select two faces, the force will be split between the two based on their area. So we might get 20 newtons of force on this face and 30 on the larger face, but the overall resultant force is 50 newtons. Similarly, we then have nodal load. This allows for a specific load at a given node in the system. However, remember a force applied to a single node will result in a stress singularity, as the area on which the force is applied is zero. The remote force boundary condition is next. This allows for an applied force with reference to an external point. The setup is similar to the remote displacement, however with force and moment definitions about the external point, replacing the translational and rotational degrees of freedom. For example, an upright for a car, which resides inside the wheel rim, reacts all the force from the tyre into the vehicle suspension. In this case, the force originates from an external point where the tyre interacts with the ground, called the contact patch, which is below and to the left of the geometry in this case. If we use a remote force and set the external point as the location of the tyre contact patch, we can then apply the loads directly on the contact patch without needing to use free body diagrams to find out the associated moments and reaction forces. This boundary condition will apply those forces with the associated moments. Finally, the surface load and volume load boundary conditions will allow you to specify a surface load in newtons per square meter that may not be normal to the surface, as is the case with the pressure boundary condition, 
and then the volume load is similar. But you can specify the load volumetrically in newtons per cubic meter. For example, an inertial load or weight. That's it for boundary conditions in FEA for SimScale. You can find more information about each of these by navigating to the boundary conditions page in the SimScale documentation, shown here. Thanks for watching and happy simulating.